Hey everyone! Today I want to talk about a common trope that I keep hearing in skeptic circles. I've heard it from Neil deGrasse Tyson, I've heard it from Cara Santa Maria, I've heard it uh, or read it from Carl Sagan, and the trope is some version of children are natural scientists. And usually this is said in contrast to adults who are, it is said or implied, are not, uh, don't have that spirit of scientific inquiry uh, anymore that they had as children. And often this claim is packaged with an implication or a claim that uh, our school system beats that love of science and that spirit of scientific inquiry out of children. And that's a large part of why we don't see it in adults. And from the first time I heard this claim, I was instantly suspicious, not because I had any uh, obvious reason why it wasn't true um, or evidence to the contrary, but because it's the kind of thing that gets repeated because it's pretty, not because it, we have good reason to believe it. Do you know what I mean by pretty? I mean, it, it sort of fits with a beautiful model of how the world works or, or how we would like the world to work. It, it like confirms our sort of uh, preconceptions or values about what's important. Uh, and, and so I'm always suspicious of pretty claims. And uh, I started looking into it a little bit, uh, just out of curiosity to see what kind of evidence there was for this claim. So first off, the part of the claim about children being natural scientists. In some sense, um, by some interpretations of that claim, that is true. Children are naturally curious and, and explore the world. Uh, I've seen some studies that suggest that children naturally do some simple form of hypothesis testing. So they'll, you know, try a thing like push something off a table, see what happens, and if it's not what they were used to or expected, they, you know, experience surprise. This is, seems to be a natural part of how they learn how the world works. The part of being a scientist that involves, you know, checking your own assumptions and controlling for your own bias, uh, I don't think kids naturally do that. Uh, those are the kinds of habits that, that you have to just train in yourself to be a good scientist. Uh, but that maybe is too strict of an interpretation of what the original claim meant. So, sure, in some sense, children are naturally scientifically curious about the world around them. The part of the claim about, uh, th that's making a causal claim about our schooling system beating that natural love of science out of children, that seems more dubious to me. It definitely seems to be the case that uh, some form of curiosity and inquiry about the world is a universal in human children. But if it were the case that uh, the school system is a big causal factor in reducing that spirit of scientific inquiry, then we would expect to see that cultures or time periods with less formal schooling would see that spirit of scientific inquiry preserved more so that the adults in those, those cultures or those societies would have more of that spirit of scientific curiosity because it hadn't been beaten out of them, right? And I wasn't able to find any hard uh, evidence or data on this particular question, but I've read a fair amount of anthropology and sociology, and I, I don't recall ever reading anything about adults in, in less societies with less formal schooling um, being more scientifically curious. This may be true. If anyone has any evidence about this, let me know. So far, it seems uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't match what I've read about the world. Uh, I also tried looking for evidence about different kinds of schooling, for example, in the U.S., um, in, in the modern U.S., I thought it would be interesting to compare the Montessori school system or schooling method, which is very like uh, loosey-goosey, I've heard it called. It's not like a formal or charitable way to describe it, but um, it's, it's a form of private school where kids get a lot of freedom in choosing the things that they want to do or learn about. Um, so they're guided, but not in a very um, strict, formal way. So that seems like the kind of school system that should preserve more of that spirit of scientific inquiry, according to this model, right? So I thought it would be interesting to compare statistics on the percentage of students who go through the Montessori school who end up pursuing careers in science versus students who go through equally good private schools, but with more formal, rigorous, um, rigorously planned curricula. Uh, I wasn't able to find any good statistics on that, unfortunately. Sorry, that was uh, maybe anticlimactic. But, you know, I think, the, so the overall, I'm, you know, the jury seems out on this question of how our science education affects kids' love of science. Curse research doesn't reveal any reason to believe this is true. 
But my main takeaway that I want to leave you with is that I, uh, I think the burden of proof or burden of, you know, suggestive evidence is on the people making the claim. And also that I think we uh, as skeptics should be uh, automatically suspicious of any claim that fits a little too well with our values or preconceptions um, about how the world should be or is. Uh, and so those two factors put together um, makes me uh, give some automatic side eye every time I hear that claim made. Um, let me know if you have any evidence on this question of whether kids are natural scientists and how our school system affects that trait. I'd love to see it. You can leave it in the comments or email me at julietrationality.org. Um, but the main reason that I wanted to make a video on this topic was less about the object level answer to this question and more just as a off the cuff case study in how I evaluate claims when I hear them, what kinds of heuristics that I use, um, and some of the ways that I try to quickly look into something when there aren't necessarily uh, clear-cut randomized controlled trials about that question.